Now I'll move to the next slide and I'll explain what attenuation really is. Okay. And to understand attenuation, one more thing that I want you to know is this particular structure. Again, I'll refer to refer you to the structure of uh, the structural genes out there. So these are the structural genes Z. Uh, so sorry, we we'll write E, D, C, B, and A. All the structural genes are in place. And uh, here we have the leader sequence. So we have this uh, structural genes out there and a leader sequence. So the most important part here is this leader sequence. This is what we are going to put our brains to, right? So to understand leader sequence and why it is so important. And before understanding this, we need to understand another concept. In prokaryotes, the transcription or RNA production from DNA, that particular part is coupled with uh, the protein synthesis. So we call it transcription translation coupling. Transcription translation coupling is an event that we can clearly see in case of prokaryotes, which is not present in case of eukaryotes, remember. But in prokaryotes, translation, translation is coupled with transcription. Okay, they are coupled. This coupled nature of transcription to translation actually helps the bacteria to utilize attenuation for the regulation of operon. Without the mechanism of transcription translational coupling, this process is not possible. Why? Let us talk about that in a moment. So, at this moment, what we need to understand is, let's say, the attenuation will come to play when the polymerase, RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter operator and start to transcribe, okay? Because the tryptophan, even though tryptophan is present, even though it is present, it fails to prevent the polymerase to bind to the promoter operator region. So, the presence of tryptophan already failed. It is there, but it already failed then only the attenuation will be in place. So at this moment what goes on here is that polymerase binds and what polymerase is doing, they start to transcribe. And as they start transcription, as they start, so the transcription is done. Transcription is done. So let's imagine this is the mRNA. So from DNA, now we are looking at the structure of mRNA. In this mRNA, what they produce? They produce a leader sequence and the leader, let's say this is the leader sequence and rest of them, E, D, C, B, A. Now, in this leader sequence, we have four different individual clusters. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four different sections in the leader sequence. Now, why this is very important is that this, this sequences are in place in such a way that they have a lot of self complementary structure. That means one can bind to two, two can bind to three. 3 can bind to 4, self interaction of RNA because RNA is single stranded, you know, it is single stranded like this. So, single stranded structures can stick to each other like a velcro. Okay, so the 3 and 4 can form structure like this. 3 and 4 can form structure like this. Okay, 1 and 2 can form structure like this. 2 and 3 can form structure, a little different structure. like this, 2 and 3. So they can interact to themselves and they can self ligate like this. So this is this is the place of ligation okay? and the rest are stem structures. So stem loop and all, this sort of structures are quite common. Now imagine one thing, if these are the two set of structures that I draw here, right? This is one set of structure where there is a stem and there is a loop. So, this stem loop that is formed between 3 and 4 is known as terminator, terminator loop, terminator loop structure. But here the structure you can see more like a tree where we not only have one stem but we have multiple stem and multiple loop in nature. This is known as anti-terminator, anti-terminator, okay, anti-terminator loop. So these are the two set of loops that can be formed while the mRNA is already transcribed from the DNA. 
And when this sort of loop structures are formed, you can see from this DNA, RNA, now we are talking at RNA level. But when this loop will form, when they'll get enough time to be folded, because this is a sort of secondary structures of RNA. And the secondary structures will only form when the environment is uh, uh, feasible and also they give, get enough time to do so. If some protein cover up this area, then they will not get a chance to self-ligate. Remember, single strand binding proteins protect the DNA single strands from being self-ligated. So similarly, if proteins are associated, they will not allow them to reanneal. But if there is no protein, then they will reanneal. Now the question is, if the tryptophan is already present in the environment, then what happens is that here we have this 1 and 2. So this first sequence is a place where uh, multiple stretch length of nucleotide is there and two codons are out there for tryptophan. Two codons of tryptophan are present in this mRNA. Okay. So remember the codon, what is a codon? Triplet, three nucleotide together. Like AUG is a start codon, UG is a stop codon. And let's say other uh, three letter codes are there coding for different amino acids. So two set of codons are present there in the sequence number one. They code for tryptophan amino acid. So now we are combining this transcription to translation. And remember, in this transcription part, although they are transcribing, but the translation is not done yet and the transcription is still not completed. So at this moment, the ribosome start to interact. The ribosome start to interact. Okay. And understand this idea now. The ribosome is translating the RNA to protein. And why we call transcription translational coupled? Because transcription is going on. Translation is going on at the same time. The portion of the RNA which is transcribed, ribosome is loaded. Translation is going on in that portion. So at this moment, what happens is they will bring tryptophan. So we know the tryptophan is already present in the environment. And when the ribosome binds there, there will be tRNA if you recall tRNA will bind uh, to them and they will try to bring tryptophan and then they will bring tryptophan quite easily because it is already available in the environment. So the ribosome continue to pass, they will not stop there because the tryptophan is readily available. When they ask for tryptophan, they will bring tryptophan quite easily, faster, they will move. So as the ribosome continue to move between 1 and 2, so ribosome is a big protein uh, and ribosome structure which uh, big protein and RNA structure, so which will cover a lot of area between 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 is kind of covered by uh, the ribosome here. And uh, 3 and 4 is now free. So 3 and 4 free. So as the 3 and 4 is kind of free in here and ribosome is covering 1 and 2, this 3 and 4 can self ligate to form stem loop structure and when the stem loop structure form between 3 and 4 that is a type of terminator loop. Terminator loop means it's, it is a loop that will terminate the process of transcription. So it will end the process of transcription, end the process of transcription due to the formation of terminator loop. So transcription will be ended, no further transcription of the structural genes would be possible. When, when there is tryptophan, there is tryptophan present in the environment, then this thing happens. Got it? Now, if you don't understand in one go, rewatch this section couple of times and you'll understand. Now, imagine a situation when there is tryptophan, no tryptophan. If the tryptophan is absent, what will happen if the tryptophan is absent? If there is no tryptophan and the ribosome, the same thing, the leader peptide, 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, all the sequences out there, the structural genes are made. Ribosome is also sitting in the sequence number 1 in the leader uh, sequence. And as the tryptophan is not present in the environment, so the ribosome sit there in the sequence number 1, ask for tryptophan, but it failed to bind any tryptophan because there is no tryptophan in the environment. And as there is no tryptophan, ribosome covers up sequence number 1. Ribosome failed to move from 1 to 2. So now ribosome only fills the sequence number 1. So again, let me draw here. So we have uh, this and the sequences. Sequence 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
and rest of the structural genes out there. So again remember ribosome is sitting on sequence 1 that makes the sequence 2 and 3 free. 2 and 3 and 4 all of them are free but the sequence 2 and 3 are going to self ligate, self <coughs> anneal not like it we say self anneal and at the as a result of self annealing between 2 and 3 these two uh, leader sequences they will form this sort of loop known as anti terminator loop so the anti terminator loop is actually formed between the leader sequence 2 and leader sequence 3 so when this anti terminator loop is formed this loop means ribosome stops there for a while when the tryptophan is obviously in place now it will take some time for them to bring tryptophan if they bring tryptophan after some time then the process can continue but if there is no tryptophan ribosome raises itself but the RNA polymerase continue the process of transcription so the transcription continues transcription continues remember transcription and translation both are taken place in the same time translation is not possible here but the transcription continues so the structural genes that these are E D, C, B and A all the structural gene and the products are continue to be made in this second mode where the tryptophan is absent and this is near to the, the trans, near the operon to be turned on ok that is the regulation of attenuation when the tryptophan is absent operon is on tryptophan is present operon should be off ok so when the tryptophan is ab uh, absent the operon is on that is quite easy we don't need attenuation to do that but attenuation's most important role is to turn off the tryptophan operon when the tryptophan is present in a situation where the polymerase continue to transcribe even though the tryptophan is present then attenuator's job is to further prevent the production of tryptophan because there will be loss of ATP loss of energy in the cell this is something that you need to understand three important concepts are discussed one the transcription translational coupling second is terminator anti terminator loop and the third is the role of attenuator is maximum in preventing the operon of tryptophan in the presence of tryptophan not in the absence of tryptophan if you understand these three points you'll never ever forget tryptophan operon in your life i believe you have a clear idea if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future and also remember one more thing if you want to understand lac operon you have a video on this you can watch that thank you